During a recent rollout of Windows 10, we had a number of uh, more advanced uh, questions come up, and what I decided to do was to compile those into a list of the 10 most interesting and most useful and present them here. So, here are the top 10 semi-advanced tips and tricks for Windows 10. The uh, first one is the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to uh, move the video over. So as you can see, I have slid the recording window over so you can see most of my left screen and a small amount of my right screen. And uh, if you take a look at the bottom, you'll see that uh, the first icon here is technology. And uh, the technology window, it's just from a website called Beta News. And, uh, but you'll see it shows up on both screens. So as you add more programs, as you're running more programs, you, that, uh, that start menu can get, uh, or sorry, task menu can get quite busy. And it can get quite confusing, so you a nice little change. If I can find some blank space in the taskbar, which I'm going to squeeze in here, or right click, I can, I can right click on that, select properties. And then I can, in the show taskbar on displays uh, uh, section, I can change the drop down to taskbar where window is open. So let me do that and just watch the bottom of the screen when I click OK. See that? So now what it's showing is the taskbar is showing only the content that is on that screen. So te this technology uh, page, for instance, is, is here and it's on the left screen. It is not showing on the right screen. Watch this. If I drag it over to the right screen, here, I have to shift this because you, you can't see it. There we go. Now, yeah, unfortunately, you're not able to see that. Let me bring up, um, let me bring up uh, Outlook here. And I will just slide this back and forth and you'll be able to see that. That's a very nice feature. It means that you have an extended taskbar across the entire set of screens you have. So let's move on to the second semi-advanced tip and trick, which is uh, how to get recent files. So there's a number of ways to do this, or how to view recent files that you've opened. So uh, the most interesting are jump lists. Uh, if you're familiar with Windows 8, you'll be familiar with jump lists, but what you might not be familiar with is that the, these now exist in the Start button. So if you click the Start button, in the Start menu, I should say, I can now right-click on uh, Word as an example, and I will have my 10 most recent uh, Word documents. Same with Excel, same with PowerPoint. That's a nice little feature. The third thing I want to show you is the new snipping tool. So if you click Start and you type in Snip, now in my case I've just created a shortcut uh, up here, but if I didn't, I could just type in Snip. And the new snipping tool has two uh, notable advantages over the previous over its predecessor. The first is this delay option. So with the old version, it was very difficult to get uh, things that were transient. So if you had a pop-up or something, uh, for instance, I'll show you with the start menu. When I click the start menu, if I were to then click on uh, the snipping the old snipping tool and click new, the start menu would go away, and I'd never be able to get a copy of it. So with this new feature, I can click uh, delay two seconds select new and then click start and there it is now I can take my snip and I'm going to intentionally take more than I need just to show you and uh, there it is so that delay is potentially quite helpful the uh, another nice feature in here is the finally added print so I can click file and print and be able to print right out of here for some reason you want to print it out you can still go right into Outlook and paste it into the body or into a uh, PowerPoint or anything else you'd like let's get rid of that the uh, fourth item I want to show you is Wi-Fi. Now this is a laptop, sorry, this is not a laptop, so I don't have Wi-Fi on here. But if you need to turn Wi-Fi on and off, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. The easiest, however, is just to click the, uh, the uh, network connection that you have at the bottom, and here is where you will see your Wi-Fi settings. Uh, you can click, uh, it'll be most likely say Wi-Fi off, and you click on it, turn Wi-Fi on, and you're on your way. Uh, that's an important one for corporate users. Uh, we ask that people keep their Wi-Fi off in the office, so um, uh, or sorry, they keep their either their Wi-Fi on or their cable on, one of the two. Uh, running both uh, sometimes causes problems. So, the next thing is uh, zooming. Now, this is not a new feature, uh, so this is the fifth item. Um, this is not a new feature, but it sure is handy. If I hold the shift key, uh, sorry, the Windows key and press the plus, it'll bring up what's called a magnifier, and I can zoom in it's pretty much as large as I want. And now I'm going to zoom all the way back out. So that might be really handy for say this, I, I'm in a boardroom and I want to show people something uh, that's not quite getting the focus I would like, I can uh, again hold the Windows key and press the plus key on my keyboard and it will zoom in. Windows minus will zoom out of course so and now I'm just going to close the magnifier because I don't want it. I'll get rid of this because I don't need that either. 
The uh, sixth item is how to add languages. So there's a number of ways to do it. You could click start and type in languages or go to the control panel in languages or settings in languages. But for a lot of people, you'll have ENG listed at the bottom right hand corner of your screen uh, if you're English. Uh, and I can simply go straight into language preferences here. Now I could add in, uh, for instance, um, uh, without administrative rights, I could add in, let's add in Chinese Simplified. This is a pretty popular one in this particular location. And there it is. So I now have English Canada, English US, and Chinese Simplified. I'm going to close that. And in the bottom right hand corner, I still, I'm still using the English Canada keyboard. I'm going to change off, however, to a Simplified Chinese and watch what happens. So when I go into uh, here and I type in Word, you'll see, or if I start to type word, you'll see that I have symbols popping up, which is kind of nice. If I go to, um, um, and that's of course because Chinese is a symbolic language. Let's actually go into Word, and there we go. And as I type, uh, it will provide some text for me. And I'll be able to simply select it as I go. I'm going to close this now. This will also apply to the browser. So if I launch Internet Explorer, which is now on my other screen, I'm going to bring it over here. And if I type in here, if I go to a web page, say, um, uh, it doesn't make much difference. Let's go to um, pizza.com. I think that's one I went to before. Pretty safe site. There it is. And I go into the search. You'll see that I have, I'm given options here. Okay, let's get rid of that. The next thing is multiple desktops. So Windows 10 supports multiple desktops um, and most programs respect it. Uh, Exceed is one program that generally doesn't, although there are ways to make it respect it, but let me just show you that. So down at the bottom here, there's something called Task View. I can click on that and I can create a new desktop. Actually, I've already created a few, so let's uh, close those. So let me go to a new desktop here and um, I will click the plus in the bottom right hand corner. And I will say, um, let's bring up uh, Internet Explorer on this one. Okay. And let's go to a page I have not been to here. So let's go to UUU. I have no idea what that is, so hopefully it's not too offensive. There it is. Wonderful. Okay. So now I can go back here and show you how that, show you how that's functioning. So I again have multiple desktops and I can add, I'm not sure what the limit is, but I've, I've not hit it before. So I've had four or five, I, it's probably 10 or 15. So let's now again, I can get rid of them simply by pressing the X and closing them. And you'll see when you do that, it repatriates all of the content to, uh, to a live desktop. So you don't have to worry about closing your programs or having a problem with that. Number eight is Internet Explorer. So um, this has been available for a while, but uh, you may not have noticed it. So let's open up a few uh, pages here. I'll just go to um, uh, the Microsoft Store and we'll go to, um, let's go to Beta News as well. Okay, so here we go. So I've got a bunch of tabs open. Now, I've been working away Microsoft Store site, and I close it, and I realize, darn, I really needed that to have that open, and I don't really know where it was. I just remember something about Microsoft Store. So I'm gonna, I can click on a new tab here, and at the bottom, I can click on Re Reopen Close Tabs, and you can see, there it is. It will reopen it for me, and it'll actually keep quite a history. If you're running this for a few days, you can have quite a pile of them in there as you open and close your tabs. Okay, the next thing is screen snap. So let's bring up a couple of things here. I'm going to bring up uh, another window and um, I'm going to shift this window over to the middle. Now th uh, this was originally brought out with Windows Arrow back in Windows Vista days. Um, Arrow was just what the desktop was called, the interface was called. Uh, but it didn't work like this. When you had multiple screens and you drag something to the middle, and I have two screens here, you have to remember, it didn't do this. So let's, uh, let me show you what happened. So I'm going to drop this and it's going to bring up uh, the other programs I have open and say, well, geez, you drag something to the middle, so you want that on half screen. Let's see what else you would like. So let's open this Excel, and it will, again, snap it to half screen for me. It's really great for comparing things. So it's just a nice little feature uh, if you are trying to, um, you know, work with, your, with uh, a lot of programs that are open. So I'll go back into here, and we're on our way. Okay, the next thing is the apps. So uh, the apps that are built into Windows 10 are actually pretty useful. Um, so uh, I don't have a sports app running, so I'm just going to bring it up. Sports. There it is. And, oh, right, I've got to change back to... <laughs> I have to change back to uh, uh, English. So let's go to English US. And sports. There we go. 
Okay, so uh, I'm in Canada, so this is showing me the uh, what sports that are popular in Canada, and you can see there's quite a few of them. I'm just going to flip through these quickly, I'm not intended to actually look at them in depth. Um, and uh, these apps, as you may know, are very simple. They were originally built on Windows Phone, and they're intended to be uh, for a uh, very simple uh, display. They're not meant to be complex with a lot of content on them. They're meant to be largely plain text and, and sort of straightforward. So. Um, now, uh, so you can see over here I can select this, uh, these different sports, but I can also click at the bottom at the cog, and I can select a different edition. So if I wanted, uh, we have uh, a couple people here, well, we have one person here from Colombia. Uh, so I'm going to click on Colombia Espanol, and uh, now I'm going to click Close App, and just watch what happens to the sports app. It will not only change the sports on the left-hand side here that are, uh, that are favorites, it will actually change the language. So if I go into here and I click on the lead story, you'll see it is uh, Espanol, which is kind of neat. So I can, I'm going to go back here. And uh, in case you're Chinese, uh, Chinese is listed uh, much more respectfully in Chinese characters at the bottom. Let's get out of that. I'm going to change this back to English Canada because that's who I am and where I am. And I'll show you the uh, news as well. So when I go into the news, uh, let's, uh, let's pick on the Chinese. Let's go over there. That's kind of fun. So let's go down. And I'll choose the Chinese. I'll click Close App. And now I'm going to click on News. And uh, the left menu will change, but also the content will change, as well as the language. Um, so it's kind of neat. Those are the top 10 semi-advanced tips and tricks for uh, Office users of Windows 10. If you have any questions, please get a hold of me uh, or anybody at the help desk. Thank you. Bye-bye.